Now, sit back and enjoy today's Ask the Experts with host Steve-O. Hey, good afternoon. Starting uh, the 1st of December, our show is moving 6 to 7. Our show is going to be on every Monday and Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. So you'll really have us in the car driving through those that traffic. I promise you we'll get you through. So today, this guy has become a great friend. He's really a great guy, and his shows go so fast. Let me welcome you, my friend, attorney Paul Labiner. We're going to be talking estate planning today and i'm gonna tell you something you know you never know should i listen to this person should i listen to that person my friend knows somebody you know listen we have the man he can't say that i can we have the expert in estate planning and that could be many things it could be wills it can be guardianship it could be elder law are there any elder people down here We're going to learn a lot today, as we always do. Let's welcome Paul Lavender. Hey, hey, you know, pretty soon it's going to be dark when we're doing the show. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for that one. Oh, we listen. I trust you. And next month, you're going to bring your son. That's correct. Who is? And tell him to clear his calendar now. His son is also an attorney, personal injury attorney. He does personal injury. So tell tell him make sure he clears. His calendar. For those of you who have tuned in, we get so many letters of people tuning in for the first time. Tell everybody about yourself and your firm. Sure, I'd be delighted to. Uh, again, good afternoon, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here as always. Uh, my firm is uh, in Boca Raton. It's in Boca Raton. I'm conveniently located on Federal Highway, just north of Yamato. My firm is, you know, is is a little bit different than perhaps some other estate planning firms in that. You know, I take a different approach. Uh, I take a different approach. He wears because, shorts to work. Well, no, I don't wear shorts to work, but I have a dog at the office. <laughs> do you really? I do. You have a. You bring your dog. In Actually, the office? there's two dogs in the office. They were kidding, they're, so they're, they're really good. Oh yeah, they're really good puppies. They're really good puppies. So we have we're very You've dog never friendly. Told me that uh, we're dog friendly. Uh, in fact, there was an article that was done about my son and I in the Florida Bar News uh, a few months back. About it, you know, attorneys that actually bring their their dogs to work. No kidding, yeah. I never was, knew that. Yeah, we were in the first, you know, the front page of the the Florida Bar News. Wow, it was it was, it was a lot of fun. So, what kind of dogs? They're both golden doodles. Golden doodles. Right. Their their mom was a golden retriever, and their dad was a white standard poodle. She's oh, sweet. those have got to be beautiful oh, dogs. She's, she's a beautiful. She's friendly. She's smart. These are your kids, right? These are definitely my children. Okay, These cheaper than going to paying for law school, right? Yeah, it's a lot cheaper than paying for <laughs> yeah. law school. Although she's very spoiled. Oh, very okay. Sweet. Yeah, I bet she is. You take her to work right. every day. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's interesting that I have a lot of clients and friends, you know, who come in and do have pets, and they're concerned about their pets. Um, you know, and you know, it's kind of interesting to kind of say that. You know, many people actually set up a trust for the benefit of their pets. You are kidding me. No, I didn't, wasn't even thinking about talking about that today. But, you know, I have set up numerous pet trusts. And, and the concern is, is that, you know, an animal, uh, whatever the pet is, you know, typically, you know, it's a, a macaw or some other, you know, animal that has a very long life expectancy. But, you know, many people are concerned, what happens, you know, if, God forbid, I'm incapable of taking care of my animal? who I love and adore and right. and, and and have the same emotional right. connection. You got to figure that out. You know, who's going to take care of it? So, believe it or not, on, on occasion, I do set up a trust to make sure that, that that animal is well taken care of. You know, we we name a trustee just like you would name a guardian for for a young child. This is all figured out in advance. So, this right? is all this is all done in advance. You know, we actually fund the trust to make sure that there's sufficient monies, you know, for insurance and vet bills and, and things along those lines and you know, it's a it's another component, which kind of dovetails with you know with my philosophy. You know, I take a holistic approach. You know, yes, I'm very dog friendly. Yes, I love animals, um, but you know, my practice is very much unique in the standpoint of not only do I deal with wills and trusts and power of attorneys, living wills and healthcare surrogates and Medicaid planning and and the like, which is important to to most of my clients. But it's, it's more of, a, of an approach that takes into account the totality of the family circumstances. 
we have, you and I have talked, you know, every family unit has their special circumstances. Right. Okay. And I talk about this all the time. And it's so sad when there's kids involved too. And it's always having the kids involved. And my, my clients are always concerned about, you know, divorce, for example. You know, a, a week does not go by where a client of mine will not say to, to me, Paul, under no uncertain circumstances, do I want that son of a gun daughter-in-law of mine or that son of a gun son-in-law of mine to get my assets. Right. I can understand that. Which is, you know, a legitimate concern today. Um, and there are many, many different planning uh, impl implications that can be addressed to preserve and protect those assets from creditors or predators or divorce or, or poor money management or uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, or any other unforeseen or special circumstances. You and I have talked about a lot you know, of things. You know, you know, the special circumstances. You know, so, I want to ask you, what happens when a client, and I'll give you something that just happened to us, that uh, my Renee, her uncle died, very close. Okay. And he did have a will, but he left money, speaking of pets, left money to dog rescue. Okay. They wanted him to leave money for Renee's daughter, who's autistic, mm -hmm. but he decided to leave it to Dog Rescue. Do you ever get involved with that? Like, are you sure that's what you, how you want to do it? I mean, well, do you it's get becoming, involved? Yeah, it is. It's becoming more and more of, a, of, of a, an important part of my, my practice is that, you know, unfortunately, seniors, and, and more particularly, you know, the elderly seniors. Right can be very much influenced by other individuals. Uh, and they're subject to fraud, they're subject to scams, they're subject to, you know, inappropriate behavior by others. Um, you know, historically, believe it or not, 10% of seniors have have some degree of fraud or, you know, or that scam. That high? Yeah, it is that high. And typically, <clears throat> believe it or not, it's usually by family members. Well, I know we have subjects we want to talk about today, but this one, there you just brought it up. That's one of the things that they're going through, that a friend of his says that he owes him money. He was promised money in a whole different state. Okay. So guess where it's tied up in now? It's in probate. Probate. And now i got to tell you. And the lawyers are going to end up fighting and making most of the money. It has been almost two years. And I tell you what, there's one thing I want to go through on this show. It's gone, this didn't have to happen. You, we've talked about this before. You're right. The money is going to the lawyers. It's, it's unfortunate. And we, you know, we were going to talk about you know, powers of attorney you know, today. And, and probate. And, 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 be, and believe it or not, this really correlates with the subject at hand. Right. Okay, because when you start dealing with trying to name an agent to take on your financial affairs or to take on medical care decisions. You're calling a lawyer an agent. Either a lawyer either a lawyer or another family member. This is, you know, through the power of attorney, for right. example. Okay. okay? Um, it is very important that you understand the powers that you're giving to these individuals. Because most people, especially when it comes to a power of attorney, you know, they'll, they can get the forms online. They can go to an attorney and for a few hundred bucks, they can get a relatively simple power of attorney. But do you understand totally the, 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 the authority that you're giving this particular individual? Most people sign a document and say, okay, you know, at least that I can check off the box. I took, right. I took care of that. Now I have a power of attorney. Yeah, because they've got a family member who flies here all the time, you know, on that money. Right. And it's almost like it's a vacation. There's no reason for her to keep flying in. Absolutely, and you know, maybe. After and this could have all been taken care of. This could have all been take, been taken care of. People Powers, don't think about this, do they? No, they don't. And they, and they think about it. They don't give it the full credence and the full credibility and the full concern that's necessary. There are so many different potential nuances that need to be considered. So these ancillary issues, whether it's the creditor, whether it's you know, uh, you know, money is going inappropriately to people or ed entities or institutions that you didn't want those monies to go to. That can all be avoided. Do you think people think that they have to have a lot of assets and in order for them to come to you? Yes.
but that's that's, that's a, a misnomer, isn't that it? That is a terrible, terrible misconception. Yes, it is. You know, it, you know. So yes, most well, it people, costs them in the long run. Well, because it costs them dearly in the long run. Because they don't know. But it costs them dearly in the long run. If if people would just, and I and I've said this before, you know, ninety nine point nine percent of my clients spend most of their time with the accumulation phase and enjoying their money. And God bless them, they should. Right. Just give me a little sliver of time. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Just give me a little sliver because of time. Because you know what's going to happen in the end. Because I'm going to And they don't want to think about it. They, they don't. And, and when they think about it, they're thinking about it emotionally. They don't have an independent third party who has the skills, who has the background, who can look at this, the totality of the circumstances objectively and map out a financial blueprint that's going to make sense for them, first and foremost but negate all of those ancillary potential problems that can potentially come into play. Why do you think, this is a great example, why do you think Prince never had a will? Why would someone with as many assets as he had, why would he not take the time? Why would all of his managers not tell him that? You know, it, it happens frequently. You know, I can't it tell does? You. Yeah, it happens quite frequently. People die, it would, what we commonly refer to as intestate, without the pleasure of a will. Why? Because they don't want to avoid, they, you know, they're, they're afraid to address the fact that they're going to die. And unfortunately, we're all going to yeah. die. Um, and it's not a pleasant conversation. It's not the type of conversation, you know, you and I can talk about a football game right. or, or the golf or the tennis or something. It's not the most pleasant of conversation to talk about your mortality or morbidity. But it's a necessary part of the equation. You have to. You know, you, it's a necessary part of But I just want people to understand, you don't have to have millions of dollars. You do not have to have millions of dollars. But okay. you know what? Even if you have three or $4,000 in your bank, and you do different types of insurance, is that right? I do. I have a financial services company that addresses many of the asset protection and many of the other, you know, issues that are important to develop a cohesive financial blueprint. So, yes, I mean... So we just had some from last show. You'll be able to answer this. And they're worried about assisted living. Okay. It's not cheap. No, assisted living is not cheap. So what type of insurance? Because Medicare doesn't handle it. No, Medicare will kill. Medicare handles the first 100 days after, when you, when, after you're in the hospital. Right. Okay. So, so if has, someone has to go to assisted living, it's a, it's how a, do you plan for that? There's lots of ways of planning for it. Okay. Number one, plan it for it when you're young and, and, right. and, and not sick. Because then you can perhaps get a third party, you know, a third party insurance company, and to indemnify you for some of those. Uh, those so expenses. there are companies that there, would. There, there are there are quality insurance companies out there that still provide quality long term care insurance. If you don't have that option, there are some wonderful annuity contracts today that actually have riders that address the long term care component. So that's another option, especially if you're older and not in great health and are sensitized to trying to develop a cohesive plan that addresses the long-term care needs. And then for those people who do not have significant amount of assets, it's the Medicaid planning. And you know, in creating ne the necessary Medicaid planning trust to implement a program that they can qualify for Medicaid without necessarily dissipating all of their assets. People don't, n don't even think about when you get over 60, 65. I'm sure they don't want to think about it, but there's so many things that can go wrong. I mean, uh, Renee's father ended up in the hospital for a year. Who, I mean, even older, who would have thought about that? But that's what you do. That is. That's that's why. That's why it's called estate planning. That's why it's called. Well, I call it family planning. Okay. I that's don't call even it estate better. planning. I call it family planning because it, that's what it is, and it addresses every component of the family. It addresses the taxes. It addresses the subjective considerations. It address, addresses the orderly disposition of those assets at the time of death. It addresses creditors. It addresses divorce situation. And at the end of the day, you have a cohesive financial blueprint that you can put your head, head down on a pillow at night. Not have to worry. Not have to worry. Give everybody your phone number. Be glad to. I, I mean, and when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about open enrollment, too. Okay. We can, I'm conveniently located, again, in Boca Raton. I can be reached at 561-998-2362. And we will be right back. I've got these...
The law office of Paul S. Laminer has been providing quality and cost-effective legal advice to professionals, businesses, individuals, and families throughout South Florida, New York, and New Jersey for over three decades. Their mission is to provide personalized service, which ensures that you, your family, your business, or your assets are safe and protected. Call attorney Paul S. Laminer today, 561-998-2362, and let him begin the creation of a financial blueprint in conformity with your needs, desires, and concerns. It took much effort and hard work for you to enjoy all that you have today. So it only makes sense that you implement strategies to protect and defend it. The Law Office of Paul S. Labiner, PA, is a reputable law office nestled in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida, that is dedicated to providing you with personalized legal services that meet the specific needs of your family. Attorney Paul S. Labiner designs estate plans that ensure the most effective transfer of wealth, implement policies to mitigate income and estate taxes, and draft wills and trusts to maximize your family's wealth. Call attorney Paul S. Labiner today at 561-998-2362. We are back. Remember, starting 1st of December, we are moving to Mondays and Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., so we'll be able to ride home with you. Today, we're with attorney Paul Labiner. We're talking about estate planning, but I want to talk about power of attorney. That's something major. When you give an attorney, that's why I'm so glad I feel so confident with your firm because that's a big thing, giving someone the power of attorney. Well, you know, it, it is, and, and, and the way you describe it, it's, it's, it's quite important, which is why it, it necessitates, you know, some really important considerations. When you give somebody the, the, the responsibility to take on uh, the ability to manage your financial affairs in the event of your incapacity or in the event that you're out of town or in the event that you don't even want to take care of your financial matters any longer, giving that person that power and giving that person that responsibility is a very, very important consideration. And, and oftentimes, I'm sorry to say, that that individual who is given that authority takes advantage of that person. Really? Yes. So you want to talk about your five safeguards? I would love to talk about my five Consider safeguards. Consider adding to a power of an attorney. I, I would love to talk about my five safeguards. Number one, the knee-jerk reaction that most people have when they think about a power of attorney is, well, I'm going to give that responsibility to, you know, a child. Um, and, and, I, and I think that makes sense, you know. And, and the question often becomes, do I give it to one child? Do I give it to all children? And the dynamics of the what family. What do you call age-wise? What do you call a child? Anybody over 18 in okay. the state of Florida. Um, but, again, the responsibility that you're giving is somebody who's going to basically be that financial manager of your personal assets. Is that hard giving it to one child? It really depends, Steve. Okay, you know. Uh, so there's three kids. You know, I've been doing this for Are forty years. Are you picking years. a favorite? Or? Yeah. Well, that's that's what happens is that people start thinking that okay, I don't want that my children to think that I'm picking one favorite over another one, but oftentimes it makes more sense because there's one child or maybe two children that have more financial, you know, savvy or more financial ab ability over that's another right. child. Um, more maybe mature. Has more mature. Uh, more experience in dealing with finances. I mean, there's a, a number of different, you know, considerations. But so what do you as an attorney do to not let the other ones feel like they're being slighted? Well, it's not really, up to the parents. It's really more up to the parent. It's really more of a subjective thing. And, you know, and typically, you know, un, un, and unfortunately is that the client will decide to choose all of the children. In okay. An effort to try and that's to, okay to do? That's okay to do. You know, but, but how that, do they figure it out? Well, then it, that becomes another issue. Do I give them all the authority? Right. Do I give one person the authority? Do they all have to work in tandem? Can they act independently well, of one there's another? Two. I mean, yeah, who right. gets the final? Right. So, say. so it, again, it does add another element of complexity if you add more than one one individual. But the issues that I want to to really address as it relates to the power of attorney, which most people don't think about when they when they draft these documents or really just sign them is number one, are you going to give gifting authority? Most powers of attorney that sh our clients have signed give the ability of that individual to make gifts. Now, typically, we do that, and we did that, 
predominantly for tax planning purposes to try to mitigate the size of the estate, mitigate the estate tax liability, maybe become Medicaid eligible. So there's lots of reasons why gifting, you know, becomes becomes an important consideration. But do you want to give that same individual that you're giving the authority to to be able to give gifts to themselves? So is this something you explain I do. to the client? I do. And you know, and and you know, people just don't, you know, people more often than not, a power of attorney is a relatively simple document. What people don't understand, and you can get it on the internet. You don't even have to call me. For 50 bucks, you can get it on the internet and, and be done with it. But that's not the point. The point is... It sounds that, too easy. It, well, it is easy, but that's where the problems lie. That's where people take it, are being taken advantage of. That's where assets are being dissipated. That's where people are have, you know, have, have not properly looked at the totality of the circumstances. What's the value of the you account? You see what happens. I see, I, I see at the end of the day. Stock. I, exactly. I, you know, I see at the end of the day what takes place. Okay, so I know that there should be an inventory that's that's take that takes place at the start. So if you have a hundred thousand dollars at the beginning, you want to make sure that depending upon what the dissipation or, or distributions are actually made, and that that an annual accounting is being done, that perhaps a third party audit by an accountant or some other uh, uh, unaffiliated totally independent, objective individual can actually review the finances of that though, that individual's work to make sure that those monies are, are in fact used appropriately. How can somebody not want to do this? Because you know what? Listen, we're not attorneys. Right. This is what you do. It is. This is not the place to cut corners. It is, and as we said before the break, you know, this is not a pleasant conversation. Right. You know, you you know, when your power of attorney comes into effect, that's probably the most precarious position that an individual is going to be in. They're either in poor health, either you know, physically or mentally. Uh, they're ter they're they're old or, or frail, uh, and can't manage their finances to the same extent that they did previously. So it's not a pleasant time of, in, in an individual's lifetime. But that's the point. That's when those individuals are being taken advantage of. When they're frail, when they're elderly, when they're you know, sick, either physically or mentally. Uh, and that's, you know, that, that's the greed factor. You know, through, it, through it all, Steve. When it comes to money. <laughs> what's the underpinning of all of this? It's money. Yeah, it is. It's money. That's what I deal with. And people change, and all of a sudden, I mean, I've seen with families what it does to families, what money does. There's no question. And, you know, and you know the, the philosophy is, and, and to some extent an accurate one, is that when the matriarch and patriarch of the family is, is here, everything seems to be okay. People, unfortunately, have not seen what I've seen over the 40 years, and that is what the dynamics of the family unit changes after the matriarch and patriarch of the family are no longer here. And See, I think people, because when you die, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, you don't. All the fighting goes on. <laughs> that, it's all out of your hands. It, it is, but that, you know, that puts a lot of money in, in attorney's pockets. You know, is, is what we call probate litigation or, or post-mortem litigation. What other steps are there? You know, in terms of, you know, addressing the annual accounting. Okay. Taking an inventory beforehand. Would have never thought of that. Okay. So you, so you know, having an independent audit on an, on an annualized basis to make sure that those assets are, are not properly uh, dissipated. Um, those are, you know, some of the... Do you hold on to... Listen, there's people out there who have so many little deals here. They have uh, a life insurance policy here. And then if they suddenly die, no one really knows where those are. Oh, I, you Does, know, do you as an attorney make sure you know where all that is? I do at the at the inception, but there could be things that take place, you know, subsequent to my meeting oh. with my client that I may not be aware of. Um, you know, some of the other things that I've seen in terms of the powers of attorney, oftentimes the power of attorney will al allow the individual to address retirement accounts, make beneficiary changes right. to, you know, to life insurance and things along those lines. Well, you know, that's, that's fraught with some potential concerns. You know, do you want that individual to have such power to be able to simply contact the ABC financial institution and say, oh, oh by the way, that IRA, instead of naming John Smith as the beneficiary, 
Why don't you may, name it Peter Smith instead? Well. Okay. Or with the life insurance. Do you find sometimes your older clients who might be going through some memory problems that family members to get them to change their wills and put their name in? Do you, does that, that come th up very often? That comes up frequently. And, wow. I, and I have to be very careful about that because I, yeah. I have some serious ethical considerations. So I, my, my antenna always goes up when I get the phone call from the child. First. Okay, first. Yeah. Okay. So by, by the child immediately contacting me, I'm already concerned. Um, That's a red flag. That is absolutely a red flag. Okay. It's a red flag because, number one, the client, the, that child is not my client. My client is the parent. Gotcha. Okay. So I need to converse. I need to consult. I need to speak directly with that parent uh, to be un be able to understand exactly what their objectives are, what their needs are. What another red flag is, and this is part of the entire process, is that when a child accompanies the parent to the meeting, that raises flags. That's a double red flag. Wow. Okay, because that can be construed as undue influence. Right. Okay, so if you want to, you want to go, you want to have a direct avenue to the courthouse. Have your children get involved with your right. with your planning, either by calling the attorney directly or accompanying you to the meetings. Those are serious potential concerns. Give everybody your phone number and your website. I'd be glad to. My phone number is five six one nine nine eight. 2362. I'm conveniently located in Boca Raton. My website is Boca Raton Estate Planning.com. Listen, do not wait another day. Give Eric a call tomorrow. Sit down with them. I'm telling you, Eric will treat you straight. And it's all about trust, and we've got the best here. Just just, just one thing. The name is Paul Lavender. Not oh, Eric. I don't know why it's an Eric. <laughs> Listen, when you have 10 shows, for some reason, you know what? Because Eric's our next show. Okay. Because <laughs> Paul knows I know his name. Anyway, Paul, thanks for coming with us. My pleasure, We'll be Steve. back next month with more Ask Super Experts. Remember, we go to 7 to 10, 7 to 6 to, to 7. 7, starting next month, Mondays and Thursdays. We're going to go to break. And we come back, we've got our urologist from Broward Urology Center. We'll be right back. <laughs>